Welcome to the Gospel Message Radio Program. My name is Wes Hepner. Thanks so much for being here today. We often hear messages about stories in the Bible, teachings in the Bible, or prophecies in the Bible, but today we want to look at a parable in the Bible that shows us who God is. My friends, God is good. He is merciful. He is gracious. He provides. He is patient. But his patience actually runs out and he will judge one day. Today we want to start with Mark chapter 12 where it shows God as all these things. It shows his character. It shows how good he is, but also that his mercy and grace has an end. And it should tell us that our life here will have an end. And unless we have accepted God's free gift of salvation through his son Jesus Christ, one day we will stand before him in judgment and then instead of mercy and grace, we will face judgment and hell. But praise the Lord, today is the day of opportunity, still the day we can come before his throne of grace and find mercy in our time of need. Before we go to our text, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity on this radio program to share your word. I pray for each listener. Bless them, keep them, hold them, draw them to you. I pray for this message that it would be led by your spirit and through it we would have a correct idea, a correct knowledge of who you are, how great and good and gracious you are. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. I pray this in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to read our text, Mark 12, 1 to 12. It says, And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set and hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and lent it out to the husbandman, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. But they caught him, and beat him, and sent him away. And again he sends another servant, and they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And he sends another, and they killed him, and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but they feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him, and they went their way. So we want to look at this parable and look at the attributes of God. Who is God really? And it's a wonderful story, my friends. At the beginning of the parable, we see the goodness of God. God is good. God gives everything we need to accomplish his will for our lives. He is a good God. Look at the story, Mark 12, 1. He talks about this man who plants this vineyard, sets a hedge about it, digged a place for the wine fat, builds the tower. He does everything that this vineyard needs to be productive. He builds walls around it to protect it. He, build, he digs a pit so they can press the grape juice. He builds a tower so they can look at the vineyard and for the farmer to stay in. Everything was given so the vineyard could be successful. The owner is a good owner who provides good things, who provides everything we need to accomplish what he asks. In this story, God is the man. He is the owner of the vineyard, and he is good. Psalm 119, 160, it says, You are good, and you alone do good. Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Over and over in the Bible, it reminds us of how good God is. We sometimes forget that because of bad things that happen in our lives. This vineyard may have had drought, it may have had thieves, but that doesn't mean the owner of the vineyard isn't good. Jesus actually says, in this world, you are going to have trouble, but don't be afraid. I have overcome the world. God is good because he gives you everything you need to accomplish his will. Isn't that wonderful? 
Next, we see not only is God good, but God is patient. He is slow to anger and rich in mercy. At times, even in the story, God's patience seems endless. Look at verse 1 of the, our text. And he lent out this vineyard to a husbandman and went into a far off country. So at this point, the farmer lets his land go. He rents it out. He gives it to someone to take care of. But at the time of the harvest, the farmer sends one of his servants to collect his part. And so it makes sense. The farmer, he has spent the money into the vineyard. He's planted the vineyard. He's provided for the vineyard. He should get a share of what the vineyard produced. However, these farmers, these husbandmen that were overseeing the vineyard thought otherwise. Look at what they did with this servant in verse 3. They caught him, they beat him, and they sent him away empty. The farmers decided they're not going to pay the owner. They would just claim this vineyard as their own. It sounds a little like our lives sometimes. God has given us everything we need and more. All our gifts come from him, and yet we think we should be in control of our lives. And if someone would try to remind us to submit to God, we would tell them exactly what we thought about that, and they could mind their own business. These farmers did the same thing. They beat up the servant and sent him back with nothing. Now, if that had been our vineyard, we would have been mad. We would have called the police. We would have gone there in anger, make sure those people were kicked off our land and never came back. We would have gotten revenge. But look at what the owner of the vineyard does. It's amazing. He sends another servant and they cast stones and wound him. He sends another in verse 5 and they kill this one. And it says in verse 5, he sends many others. They beat some and they kill some. The owner is patient. He sends another servant and he sends another and another. See, the vineyard represents the Israelites. The farmers are the religious people. And the servants are the prophets and messengers of God. This parable shows God sending one prophet after another and them being ignored, beaten, or killed. The last prophet God sent was John the Baptist, and they beheaded him. By sending these messengers and prophets over the centuries, God was showing his patience and also that he was not willing to give up on his people. And God does the same for us. He sends Christians into our lives, maybe someone to share the gospel, to give you wisdom, to help you find God's path for your life. Some of you are like those farmers who will reject those people, make fun of them, laugh at them, tell them off. Some of you have had Christian parents who only wanted the best for you, but you pushed them away. You made their life miserable. You disobeyed them. You lied to them. But God was patient. He kept sending people until one day you understood, you accepted. And maybe because you understood and accepted, you became the messenger. You share God's word now, and now people laugh at you and hurt you. And you will need to be patient just like God was with you. We see in this story the goodness of God, but also the patience of God. And now we want to look at the love of God. Look what the owner does after he sent all these servants. He sends his son. He says in verse 6, well, they will reverence him. But these husbandmen, these farmers, they say, well, this is the heir. Let us kill him and we'll have the inheritance. And that's what they do. The owner, he's got one option left, his son. I think the people listening to Jesus tell the story won't have been able to believe that this owner would send his son. But this owner has a love for his vineyard. He has a love for the farmers. He wants to win these farmers. He doesn't want to destroy them. Remember, the vineyard is the people, the farmers are the religious leaders who are supposed to take care of the people and lead them to God. But these farmers turned on the owner and killed his son. If you think of God sending his only son to the world, we see his great love for mankind. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 4, 9 and 10 says, In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us 
and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God knew what would happen to his son when he sent him. His son would be killed, but he sent him anyway, so that he could die for our sins and we could be saved. God is good. God is patient. God is love. But look what happens next. God will judge. The patience of God is not endless. We see this over and over in the Bible. We see this today in our lives that God's patience has an end. And we see this in the story. Look at verse 9. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. Now God does not judge these farmers for revenge, but because he is holy, he is righteous, and his nature demands a punishment for sin. God also knows those farmers don't really care about the vineyard. They just care about themselves. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28 says, It was appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. My friends, you will one day die. And there is a judgment after you die. Today your sins can be forgiven because of Jesus Christ. You can receive salvation today. We see the goodness of God, the patience of God, the love of God, and the judgment of God. But the story, it's not over. The story doesn't end on judgment. It ends on grace. Look at verse 10 and 11. Look what Jesus says. The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. Isn't that grace? Verse 11, this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. See, even though the religious leaders would reject Jesus and kill him, it's not the end. The stone the builders rejected became the cornerstone. God would exalt his son, Jesus Christ. When the world tried to destroy God's plan by killing Jesus, Jesus died for our sins, rose on the third day and conquered sin, hell and the grave, and he reigns forevermore. This shows us how incredible God's plan is and how full of grace he is. We often take his love and patience for granted, but there is still hope. That hope is found in salvation through Jesus Christ for all who believe. My friends, have you accepted this free gift? The door is still open for you. The time of grace is now. If you're listening to this program, you have an opportunity. All you need to do is trust and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He loves you. He died for you, and he's preparing a place for you in heaven. Won't you accept him today? If you want to accept Jesus, you can go on your knees right now and pray a prayer something like this with me. Heavenly Father, I understand that I'm a sinner. I know that I have failed and I have done wrong things. Heavenly Father, would you forgive my sins through your Son, Jesus Christ? I know I need you as a Savior, and I believe in Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, as the Savior of the world. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending him to die for me. Thank you for accepting me as your child. I put my faith and my trust in you. I ask you to lead my life, to help me, to guide me, and to prepare a place for me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me, and thank you for giving me the gift of salvation. I pray this in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. With your whole heart, you accept Christ as your Savior. You are in the family of God. My name is Wes Hepner. You've been listening to the Gospel Message radio program. Thanks so much for listening and being here. Next week, further in the book of Mark, I hope you'll be here. God bless you richly this coming week. To God be the glory, great things He 